very good afternoon uh, to you, Ken. Now, first things so first, uh, looking at the Centum uh, corporate uh, bond, it received only 64% uh, subscription. We know that the company was looking uh, for 5 billion shillings, uh, but only managed to raise 3.2 billion shillings. Um, yeah, okay. um, I think the results were pretty decent, um, considering if you consider that at the point that they began um, the private placement, um, government treasuries were more or less around the same level. Um, the premium on, on, on their REIT was uh, not so high. But uh, what happened is by the time um, the, the whole placement had been closed and um, the whole subscription was over, I mean, look at where the five-year bond is now. It's trading at um, sub-10 levels. So now it looks very attractive. Um, I know for a fact there are a lot of investors out there who wish they had actually taken part in it. Mm -hmm. But um, considering the, the environment we were in, uh, I think it was a pretty good performance for, for the Centum bond. Looking at the likes of uh, housing finance, they've just been given the go-ahead uh, for the second tranche of the bond, uh, of a seven-year bond. Uh, how, are, how are they likely to fare? Um, I think it will actually be well taken up. Um, there's, there's, still, uh, it's, there's still a lot of speculation on the pricing of the bond, but um, if, they, if, uh, if the numbers they gave us in 2010 are anything to go by, um, they came to the market at about 13% uh, for a seven-year paper. Currently, the government treasury for a seven-year tenor is at about 10.9%, 10, 10 10 almost 11%. So um, if, if that's about, if they come in at 13, that's about 200 basis points above. Uh, 250 to about 13 basis, uh, 300 basis points above. So this will be very attractive. I'm sure mm -hmm. there'll be a lot of interest in this paper. And HF has come um, quite a bit, uh, quite a long way from uh, 2010. They've grown. Um, their numbers are looking a lot stronger than they were back then. So I'm pretty sure there'll be a lot of interest in, in this uh, corporate issue. We did have Treasury bill rates uh, ticking up in last week's uh, trading session. Would you say now that uh, the tide is turning and rates are likely to go up from here on? No, I, would, I didn't say that. Um, last week was uh, quite a unique week. Um, we were paying in installment tax, which is paid uh, every, every quarter so on the 20th so um, that actually pulled a lot of money out of, of, of the market a lot of liquidity also there was um, the 15-year bond issue which was coming up which actually the value date was actually yesterday so a lot of liquidity had also been put aside for this so um, the people who actually went for the uh, the t-bills were i mean had um, had a lot of leeway and um, so they actually bid up quite a bit uh, cbk kicked out as much bids as many bids as they could but um, I mean, the rate still ticked up slightly. But uh, what will happen is I think expect, expect this week, there's still a lot of liquidity in the market. So I actually expect it to either um, hold where it is or decline slightly. Well, we had the 15-year bond uh, trading today with the levels of about 11.28% uh, there. That's quite pretty low when you look at uh, things there currently. Um, yes, uh, if you consider that it was issued at an average of about 12.08%. Uh, um, 11.2 is almost 100 beeps um, down um, on the first day of trading, which is quite impressive. Um, I think what we may we may see the market um, slow down a bit on this issue, because um, I mean they picked CBK picked quite a lot. They picked up about 20 billion of this paper. From I mean they actually issued about 20 billion of this paper in the market. So there is at the moment a lot of liquidity on this issue and a lot of speculators there. But um, I think going forward, looking at probably the next four to six weeks, we should see active trading on this paper. In fact, mm -hmm. most um, investors expect it to trade at levels below 11%. And uh, looking at inflation figures, we are expecting inflation figures out uh, sometime uh, this week. We have seen inflation trending lower, currently sitting in six, uh, um, single digits. Are you seeing a further decline in inflation? Um, yeah, well, despite, I think, fuel prices rising um, slightly uh, this month, I th uh, food prices have actually um, continued to decline. Um, so I think this will affect the index a lot more. So I expect inflation to continue to decline, albeit not as uh, strongly as it was uh, before, but I still do expect it to come down. And this will actually be quite a positive indicator for the market. A lot of people are waiting for a signal because what, what has happened with um, the T-bill moving up and also um, the 15-year uh, average yield moving up to about 12.08. We've seen activity on the secondary market slow down quite a bit. So a lot of investors are waiting for inflation figures, which will actually be, be a positive indicator that um, the rates are still going in the direction we all expect.
And looking at the overall market, uh, we are heading to the end of uh, the third quarter, seeing some positivity coming through for the NAC 20. Now, if we look into the second quarter, are we likely to continue uh, this uh, run that we are seeing on the market currently? Um, I think that, that last, um, I'd say, uh, week we've seen, uh, I mean, uh, turnover has increased quite a bit. There's a lot of portfolio rebalancing going on uh, among, among investors as we move towards the end of uh, the third quarter. And uh, this will probably persist until the end of this quarter. We may see the market slow down as we open the new quarter next week. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen a lot of bookovers. Uh, for example, today EABL uh, did um, quite, so, quite some heavy trades. A lot of bookovers by investors uh, rebalancing their portfolios as we close the quarter. So mm -hmm. activity should continue at uh, the levels we're seeing and maybe we will see a lull at the, from, from the beginning of next week. Well, that's where we have to leave it. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, that was uh, Kenneth Minjiri. He's a fixed income and money markets analyst uh, from Stanbic Investments, joining us from our studios in Nairobi.